Hi, I'm Brad with the IHSA. We notice oftentimes in hoisting and rigging on construction projects that workers don't know the advantages and disadvantages to different types of rigging hardware. So today we're going to be talking about our chain slings. We're going to talk about some of the advantages, the disadvantages, and we're going to walk through a proper inspection of our chain sling. Of course, we want to refer back to our manufacturer's instructions to ensure that we're doing the proper inspection and using the chain sling to the manufacturer's uh, direction. Now with chain slings, they tend to be very durable and long lasting. They're much more durable than a lot of our wire rope slings and our synthetic slings that we find in the field. So they tend to repay the cost or the additional cost that's involved with purchasing a chain sling. They can be used in a large number of configurations. You can get them with multiple bridle hitches. In addition, they can be used in conjunction with other types of rigging materials. And they often have shortening hooks and different ways of adjusting them to different lengths thus making chains a very, very versatile tool. Another advantage to chain slings can be that they're often able to be repaired by the manufacturer. Of course, we can't do any repairs on site, but manufacturers can often repair chain slings if they become damaged. Chain slings can also be used in higher temperatures. Unlike their wire rope and synthetic sling counterparts, chains can be versatile for a lot of different temperature ranges. So while there are advantages to using our chain sling, we also have to take certain precautions and understand some of the detriments to the chain sling. Now our chain slings must be manufactured out of alloy steel. They need to be grade 80 or 100 or higher in order to use for overhead hoisting. We want to find that location somewhere along the chain. It's going to be labeled with an 8 or a 10 or a number along those lines to tell us that we're using the right grade of alloy steel. Chains tend to be very heavy, so we have to take some musculoskeletal precautions if we're moving them large distance, perhaps the consideration of using a piece of equipment to transport it from one location to another. When we're lifting with chain slings, we want to make sure that the corners of the material are softened or rounded so that we don't end up with bent links where the pressure of the sharp corner is put on the chain sling. There's also significant risk of pinch points when the chain sling becomes under load and the links start to shift and lock into position, there's a distinct risk of us getting our fingers or different uh, pieces of our clothing caught inside those locations. So we need to be very aware of that. Chains must be labeled with their working load limit. Now in Ontario, the working load limit must be five times lower than the breaking strength of the sling. That's really important to understand this because with the working load limit label on a lot of chains, the working load limit calculation might be done at a different ratio than we need to use in Ontario. Chains can sometimes be rated at four to one or 3.5 to one. Whereas in Ontario, they have to be rated at a five to one ratio. So in that case, we'd have to recalculate the working load limit for the chain slay. Now, when we look to inspect the chain itself, we wanna check for a few different things. We wanna to check to make sure that none of the links are deformed or stretched in any way. We're gonna check for wear, nicks and gouges. We're gonna look for pitting and corrosion. We wanna verify also that the links are not stretched. So what we wanna do is count a specific number of links, take a measurement of that with our tape measure, and then check that at various intervals along the chain to make sure that there's no difference to indicate that it's been stretched in some way. Now, if we're using a hoisting hook, for lifting with our chain, we have to make sure that we follow the 90 degree rule, which means that the hook should not be loaded any more than 45 degrees off of Flummy Setter on either side. The other distinct disadvantage to chains is that they're very susceptible to shock loading. Some of our other sling varieties absorb shock load a lot better than chains, whereas chains will stretch or perhaps catastrophically fail if they're shock loaded. Now to close out, we wanna make sure that we're always lifting within the capacity of the chain. Always give yourself a safety factor because again, all of our chains are rated in the factory under new conditions. So always lift within the capacity and generally upsize to make sure that you're lifting in a safe manner. Of course, always make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions and follow any criteria that they have for replacement over and above what we've talked about here and over and above what the Ontario regulations tell us. Thank you very much for listening to our safety talk on chain slings. Please visit our website at www.ihsa.ca and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more safety talks.